This is The Big MJ Debate, the show that discusses the most exciting, divisive, controversial and hilarious goings on within the Michael Jackson fan community and also gives you a first class seat to MJ events and hotspots around the world. I'm Pez Jax and I'm joined today by a full panel of co-hosts. Her Roman Empire is the Met Gala red carpet. Deny it if you dare. It's Sean McLachlan. <laughs> <laughs> don't blame it on the sunshine moonlight good times or even the boogie just blame it on Ilya Mazzani <laughs> <laughs> and for her and Michael it is simply a tale as old as time it's our special guest host Eve <laughs> Sometimes watching the Michael Jackson estate is like being on a quest where the map you're following doesn't know where the treasure is either. It starts you on a course, confuses itself, and then just makes it up as it goes along. If it doesn't like what it sees along the way, it just changes itself to suit. We are, of course, talking about the chaotic story of MJ Merch Official, the faceless merchandise store that appears to bastardize the foundation of the iconography that Michael Jackson himself created in an effort to appear down with the kids. Yet, are we simply blind to what's in front of us? Do we possess the powers of Gandalf where we can confidently slam our staff into the bridge and proclaim, you shall not pass? Or do we exhibit all the characteristics of Snow White and continue to take the obviously poisoned apple from this decrepit hag? <laughs> Honestly, fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, on that introduction, we're talking about MJ Merch Official. So, I guess we should probably start by discussing the estate's history with merchandise. I mean, they've got a long, colourful history. And MJ Merch Official doesn't seem to be taking us in a better direction, as we said in the opening statement. The map is a bit confused and doesn't know where it's going. So what is your experiences with MJ merch sort of from the past, from the last, let's say, 10 years? Okay, I have a few experiences where I've bought this and it took about three. It was, it, it was supposed to arrive for Christmas, took about three months. Um, <laughs> then I've ordered Scream Vinyl because I thought, okay, this is the first one for pre-orders. So it everyone had the vinyl except me like halloween passed <laughs> and there was no no vinyl anywhere then i ordered my white hoodie which was for diamond celebration uh was that the one with blood in it that's the one <laughs> <laughs> it was for yes it was around the time of diamond celebration because i ordered the same hoodie and mine had hair in it um <laughs> And I was half expected to like turn it inside out and see a note stitched in that says "Help me," but <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't find anything. But I did have hair. What a gift! <laughs> so overall, I would rate it uh, two minus. <laughs> oh, we're getting a grading score going. <laughs> we are going to do all of it. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't planned, but it just came to me. Let's go. Okay, I ordered, I think, three times from the official store. And if you waited, Ilya, three months, well done, because I think <laughs> I waited like six months. And I'm not sure if it was new longer than that. And I think my first order was the smart idea, getting that T-shirt with a dangerous pose and the beautiful light. So yeah, it looks like you have a T-shirt with Michael and a huge bin in front of him, which somehow <laughs> I didn't realize when yes. I was ordering it. But then it came, and I was like, "Okay, fair enough." And and then I think that was the one I was waiting the longest even for. So not sure why. Then I ordered a few jumpers, masks. And every single time, like, it never came when they said it will come. Always waited ages for it. 
So would I order again? Probably yes, if mm. there is something I like, but I definitely wouldn't count on it. Like if I want it for a spe special occasion, I will not count on it that it will come on time. Like definitely not. I have ordered, I think I can count on one hand, the amount of times I've ordered it. I, whenever I've got anything that's been from King of Shop. Um, <laughs> Stainless plug and we love it. But what I will say is that it's a common theme with all of the releases that the official merch has ever been that there has been some sort of gripe, whether it be the time it takes for it to come, the quality when it comes and what, objects you also might find in with your order <laughs> and sometimes they're just naff so there never seems to be a release without a catch and I feel like that's kind of the common theme with the estate but if we're talking about merch um, there's always a bit of a catch so I feel like it's never a clean job there's always a but I, I agree. I think with the official website talking specifically about apparel, um, as you know, I have a huge MJ t-shirt and hoodie collection um, that is now becoming obscene. Uh, so I used to want to own everything. And so every time they release a new range, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. And I think where it really, I started to notice there's to be a few issues was probably before, but my recollection is when Scream came out. And I ordered the Scream sweatshirt in, I think it was like September, and it arrived in February. And I've said this on here before, like, you know, who's celebrating Halloween in February? And then probably when the quality really started to go downhill was after the estate lost their contract with Bravado, because Bravado is obviously a world-leading supplier, and they supply for hundreds of artists, and Bravado are amazing. Um, and we did a lot of work with Bravado, despite what a certain somebody tried to say afterwards. We did a lot of work with Bravado um, and even managed to help get some designs into the shops. But when Bravado and the estate stopped working together, the quality just went downhill because they had no single supplier that was doing it properly. And I remember buying the This Is It 10th anniversary merch. They had a really nice um, red long sleeve top with him doing this on it. So I ordered it. And it took months and months to come. And when it came, it was shit. I mean, I've never, ever, ever, ever worn it because I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I've thrown it in a bag and stuck it in a box. I hate it. The design, instead of being like the full body is down the bottom, it's thin ass quality. The thread has all come out. It's crap. And I was just, nope. And I kind of made a, uh, you know, self uh, promise to only buy stuff now if i really like it and not just because i want to have everything oh and the one of the worst ones they did sorry we will move on i promise before i blatter on about my experiences was they did one year that they did a series of calendars uh and each cover of the calendar was a color of the invincible album so you had the five different colors so they sent us red uh, no sorry they sent us orange green blue and silver and the red one wasn't there. So we waited another month and they said, oh, yeah, red one's still in production. Right. Okay. Then they came back to us and said, oh, sorry, uh, we don't have the red one anymore. We can send you another orange one if you like. And I was like, I don't think you get what this is. It's five collectible covers. It's not just pick a color that you like. Do you know what I mean? It's like, the, oh, just the idiocy. The idiocy. See, now we're talking about merch. I'm just going to get all pissy throughout this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with their terrible uh track record for delivering quality suitable merchandise on time and that doesn't fall apart after one wash they then thought Do you know what we're so good at this let's set up another venture so <laughs> enter stage right mj merch official it's been around sort of six months what do we know what's going on what i can see online it's a mess. So, I don't know. My, my first thought was that it's a fake website because yes. I, couldn't, I, I couldn't understand why there is the Michael Jackson official store and then all of a sudden you have like another official merch website. So my first thought was that it's a scam and <laughs> that it's like they just 
trying to get some orders and in the end they will be like oh sorry guys this was a fake website <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's not the you know it's not far from possible with them is it yeah, I just I, I I was confused. I was like, okay, so you bring out new merch. Why are you doing a new website for it if you already have a website where where you sell merch? I think the first thing that popped up was the Instagram, and we followed it. I think pretty much right away, and they posted. I can't remember if they posted all their designs on the one post or just the first one, and I liked the first designs. Not all of them. But I liked the first designs, especially the black T-shirt with the stars and it had Michael on it. You do you know the one I'm talking about? And it yeah. had the stars and it said Michael. It didn't have Jackson, but it had Michael, and it was a picture of him singing. We'll get it. The up. one from Bad yeah. Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a few I liked, and I, to be honest, I've got to say I was excited about MJ Merch Official when it first came up, and I was in loving and blissful ignorance because I thought this was going to be a new exciting merch store. Um and then it all got a bit strange when we noticed all these influencers were commenting on the pictures and you know the Michael fan community especially online you see people a lot that you recognize and we're scrolling down this list and I'm thinking who are all these people clicking on their profiles and clearly they're bots or they're paid or whatever it is and then I actually went to try and put something in the basket just to see. And the first day I looked, the shipping was £30. The second day I looked, it was like 42 So it was just all very odd. But I've got to say at the start, I was I was excited about it because I thought, oh my God, this is something like new and fresh and designs I actually like, which is rare. Yeah, I agree. I think the first kind of uh, announcement of it, I was kind of okay. This this looks this looks exciting because I thought they were gonna, like you mentioned, uh, Eve. They've got two stores, so I thought th this was like the one on the Sony website was done, and they're they're kind of branching out on their own. They're going to do their own thing, like purely from the estate, and therefore there's no middleman, there's no chaos. I mean, actually, that's a bit of a naive thought, isn't it? The estate and no <laughs> chaos, but like there was no there was no sort of middleman that was disrupting the supply chain but no um so i i kind of uh did a bit of looking i know obviously Shah, you covered a lot of this in in the small talk which we did when it first sort of came up and we were questioning um what was going on but the website was registered on the 14th of july 2023 and then they put their first post on instagram on the 16th of august 2023 so it's only a month within that and they said first drop in two days, and which was the 18th of August, which was when the first collection dropped. With yes, okay, the the nice bad tour picture and the NAF official merch king. Um, but I think what stands out to me most about MJ Merch official, and still I checked it just before we came on this this recording. There's still no terms and conditions on the website. There's still no refund or returns policy outlined on the website there's no delivery instructions outlined on the website there's no privacy policy outlined on the website and there's no sufficient contact information as you said this is all the kind of key points of a scam site but it's not but it's um, got official in the title is that not enough <laughs> <laughs> um Within this this uh, evolving state of nonsense, there's been four drops. The first three kind of came in quick succession, and the fourth one, Seb spoke into existence the other day when he said, oh, there hasn't been a drop for like three or four months, and then literally we went to the shop, came home, and it was like, no drop. I was like, can you speak like winning millions into the, into the existence <laughs> or something? <laughs> um, so they've had four drops. They, they put out all this merch um and some fans have actually bought it um eve <laughs> that's a that's a kind of spotlight on you but you have been a customer of mj merch officials so for those of us that have thus far avoided it give us a little rundown of the buying experience and, and even sort of down to if you can recall uh, any email confirmations you got that was there anything that was official how it was packaged just anything that we can kind of tear yeah. apart i guess <laughs> so i was a i was a typical victim 
because when the first <laughs> drop came and it was immediately sold out, I went like, oh my God, oh my God, that sold out so quickly. So when the second one came with the thrill stuff, which I really liked as well, I was like, oh my God, I have to quickly order it. Otherwise it will be sold out as well. So I, I would say I completely fell for their game and the trap they set up. So I ordered the trailer stuff. I ordered a jumper and a t-shirt, put it in the bag, then saw the postage and was like, no. Then of course, the next day, something was already sold out. So again, panic. So I was like, no, 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 I have to order it. So I ordered it, postage. I don't remember how much was postage, but definitely more than 30 pounds, 100% more. It was, I did order a few times from the States and I just remember I never paid such a high postage from the state, States. And then on top of it, there was a tax for the, the customs tax. So in the end, I thought that Jermaine Jackson is delivering the parcel personally <laughs> to me because... <laughs> I I must have paid for a jumper and a t-shirt over 200 euro with like everything all together. It came quite fast. Definitely a dif difference, I would say, to the Michael Jackson store. So I didn't have to wait like months and months. Like, I like it. Like, I would say the jumper is really good quality wearing it right now. And the t-shirt is fine as well. So quality-wise, I would say it's a step up from the other store. And would I order again? Like if I didn't spend money on something for a while, then maybe. Because I have to admit, I like their designs, except the last drop. I, I will, and this is rare for me, I will actually jump to their defence on... Well, I won't jump. Maybe I'll, like, side shuffle to their defence. <laughs> um, but, I, I, you know, as somebody that, that runs a, a merch store, postage is really, really expensive. And what has happened is that the price hikes on postal services have really damaged small businesses. Um Plus, on top of that, you've got Amazon where everything is order now, get tomorrow or order now, two pound shipping or whatever it is, or free shipping with Prime that everybody expects shipping to be nothing. So I understand there being a high shipping costs in certain instances. Where I don't agree with them is that, as you say, you are a global entity. The MJ estate is, as they remind us all the time, is over two billion dollar estate, global, this, that, the other. You should have a European outlet, an Asian outlet, and an Australian outlet. If this is meant to be your new venture and your new big thing, why haven't you got those outlets to make the shipping more affordable? But instead, everything's got to come from, from home turf, and therefore it's costing people three times the price. I mean, sure, you, you've obviously been one of the most sort of vocal about the, the shipping costs when it first happened obviously hearing eve's uh testimony on that would you say that's changed your mind or i guess another point just to add on to that is the cost of the product itself i was act i did what you said i went on and i wanted to buy that t-shirt added it to my basket and as soon as i saw the shipping costs i was like no way no way and i'm not paying more for shipping than um for the product and do you know what? I probably wouldn't have been so opposed to getting it right away had the reviews and experiences that we had had with Michael's official merch from the other website weren't so bad. I kind of struggled to see this as a separate entity because I, I just assumed, well, this is going to take forever to come. We might pay for the shipping and what if the quality is not great and all the rest of it. I am happy to hear that the quality is a step up. Definitely, definitely. Um. And something that you actually said about these selling out. What a lot of nonsense. See, at Christmas, they were like, they're back. We've got more <laughs> stock. They never sold out. They just withheld. Do you think that's them trying to do like, they're trying. Yeah, I fell, I fell for it, so. <laughs> but do you think they're trying to be like Supreme yes, and some yes. of these other brands being like, check out the drop? You know, and it's like to do this high end thing that brands 
sorry, this high end approach that brands take now where it's limited drops, but the difference is when a high end brand says it, usually it is limited and it's not just like, oh, we'll sell 13 and at Christmas we'll bring out 30 more. But don't you think that where they've failed there is that, as I think both of you mentioned, that there has been such a bad experience for shoppers from michaeljackson.com that when MJ Merch Official popped up, not only was we all questioning, is this even official? But it wasn't presented to us in a way that sort of says, we're, firstly, we're separate to that. And secondly, we're better than that. You know, you may have had a bad, no, no one's asking you to go out and say, you may have had a bad experience with them, but we're going to be better. But it wasn't even kind of presented to the fans in a way as like, this is a new shopping experience for you. So naturally, everybody just carries over their own experiences, but it's like nameless, faceless, no terms and conditions. It just feels like, oh, we're just putting a lipstick on a pig and pushing it back out there. Isn't that what you say, Jeff? Something like that. Um, but you know, we've we've obviously discussed the the quality. Um, Ilya, would you consider, based on the experiences we've had with Michael Jackson website, would you consider paying the higher end price if the quality is better, or is it still just that I'm not paying seventy five dollars for a hoodie? Honestly, if I really loved it, then I I'm willing to pay, as long as delivery is not forty five dollars on top. <laughs> But yeah, no, I would absolutely do it. Even the price, the thing is, if you look at any merch store of any artist, that's what the prices are those days. Beyonce's jumpers are 75. Janet has this beautiful like sweatpants and a jumper set as well. Both, I think, pieces are like each 75. So that's the prices. It's not just the Michael store who put those prices up so high. I think definitely originally the prices on MJ Merch Official were ever so slightly cheaper than the Michael Jackson Official store. So we also thought that this was going to be a more affordable alternative for people. And then it was basically ruined as soon as we saw the shipping costs. But that was the case at the beginning, wasn't it? If you want to provide $75 hoodies so that someone who's wealthy can be a fan, you need to provide a £25 hoodie so that someone that isn't wealthy can also be a fan. And that is still where we are in this kind of you know ugly dynamic with the estate and fans that they just it's like if you don't have the money we're not interested in you and michael was never ever 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 about that no. you know michael would give his own jacket off his back to fans literally he's given his own clothing away and these lot are like no unless you're willing to pay 55 dollars for a t-shirt you can't rep your favorite artist I think another way it was quite obvious that they were trying to appeal to a younger audience was they took a totally different approach to the way they've ever tried to do a strange way of advertising before where they've paid influencers um, that we've never heard of and we've covered this in other episodes so I won't bore you all but they were really trying to promote this by comments and influencers saying can't wait to get mine can't wait to do this can't wait to do that i'm telling you right now well i was going to say i am the younger generation am i feel like i'm pushing it now <laughs> oh behave well 25 i'm not 16 <laughs> well i'll i'll be the voice we're not interested get it away <laughs> <laughs> I think um I used it for sport when I saw some of those comments like oh, this is fire slay love this can't wait to get mine I picked a few at random and I replied to them and I put which one did you buy and how does it look on let's see a picture <laughs> But we've spoken briefly about the designs um, and most notably uh, the designs and the logos. So let, let's get into this. I mean, for me personally, what I hate that they keep doing is they'll take something Michael did and tweak it and make it ever so slightly different or take it within the same vein as how it was and make it different. So if you look at the actual Michael Jackson on MJ Merch Official, it's like the Thriller font, but redone. 
So you can see that it was like, oh, well, let's take the thriller font and kind of make it different, which is exactly what that is. Um, they kind of did it with uh, MJ1, where they like took his autograph, but made it different. Um, and so I think they've done a lot of that with, with MJ Merch Official as well, where they've kind of taken the original logos and made it different. And I'm not here for it. Didn't we start this at Thriller 40 as well? Didn't we do this? Mm -hmm. um, no, I I don't mind slight change. Maybe like, I don't mind what you're wearing ever. Like, I really like that top. Uh, but when you see something like Thriller 40 logo or what they've done with the bad recent drop, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't understand it. it it just someone looked at that and just goes yes that's so much better than 45 year old iconic bad logo let's get rid of that and just put our own like it make it make sense mm -hmm. it's it's so dear so you're trying to sell it to fans and it's so dear to us right it's for you to go in and just remove the whole thing and just try to sell it to us it's just like cool great you can keep it. I, I don't think like no fan will buy the last drop from the website because you would look like an idiot, literally. <laughs> and I would even go I would even go as far and say, even if they would make the logo look better, it's still wrong. Like that's so iconic logos. Mm -hmm. The bad thriller off the wall. Like you are not even a fan. And if you see somewhere written bad, you know that's Michael Jackson's bad because it's just so iconic if it's the real like font. So I don't know, like if you would ask online, put the design up and say, who likes this design? You would get, I'm pretty sure 100% nobody. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they never posted it on twitter did you notice that's when they the, announced the yeah. drop it was on facebook it was on instagram but it wasn't on their twitter like, do they have business meetings where someone comes up with this design let's say there is 20 people sitting in the room and they say this will be our new drop and 20 people go oh my god that's beautiful I don't think yeah so. like you have to ask yourself who has the brass neck to walk into that room and say, do you know what? You know that iconic logo that everybody knows the world over? Here's a here's a different version of it. <laughs> and what flipping Muppets are sitting there going? Yeah, that's... It, it, it must it's... be one person doing those decisions and not asking anyone and literally just putting it out. The rest of the merch is giving you Michael's face on there and a different, you know, font. With the cap, it's giving like go girl give us nothing. Because it's not giving it's not giving bad album. And all it has is bad and it says Michael Jackson it like at the bottom. It's not Michael Jackson. I don't know if they're trying to modernize it. I don't know if they're trying to put a flip on it. You don't need to modernize anything that's iconic. Things that are iconic are cemented in time and have remained iconic for the reason that they're perfect as they are, they're untouchable, you don't go need it. And I honestly have got to say, I did not see one positive remark about these new ones online. Everybody seemed to hate them. Even people that I know for a fact love everything that they've put out before. The fans are loyal all the time, and we constantly get treated like dirt with bullshit products, like a, and let's get to it, please, a 75-pound tote bag. <laughs> I mean, when I saw I, I genuinely thought, my first thought was, it was £7.50. And I was like, oh, that's not bad. Wow. I was like, Karen must be having a good day. <laughs> and then I kind of looked at it again. I was like, no, 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 it's actually $75. For not only a tote bag, but a shite design with a complete switch up of the classic thriller logo and the 1982 date. Who do you think they are putting this towards? Honestly. Well, it's definitely not the general public because a general pub general public doesn't go on an artist website to order mm -hmm. merch. Fans do that. Yeah. General public would buy a t-shirt in a shop when they see it. Like you don't sit at home and think 
or let's go on the Michael Jackson website and buy some merch. Fans mm -hmm. do that. I I don't know who it's for. Um, I don't know who they're trying to target either because they've got no marketing behind it. I am stumped. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been doing marketing for a long time, and we focus on target audiences and brand awareness. And, and this one's flawed me. I'm like, I I don't get it. The only thing that makes me think that it's maybe marketed towards, poorly marketed towards the younger generation is because of the way that they've done the whole influencer thing. I mean, they've also kind of tried to follow the way that other brands do these limited drops. And I think that this is a poor attempt at modernising the logos. Leave <laughs> bad logo alone. <laughs> um, no, I... Honestly, I, I I like the uh, point Eva made earlier, where she said like it's it's so confusing because it's a different website and it's just like when I first looked at the merch actually, I thought hmm that could be in Bershka shop like it looked like the all the designs and it's literally going cheaper looking and cheaper looking cheaper as, as yeah. they go. You know, like like you guys have said, if if the design is right and the price is right. And I feel that it's it's going to be right for me. I, I've got no problem saying, yeah, okay, maybe I was wrong, or maybe I will will go back and do this. I would, it would kind of bother me a little bit because I'm still concerned about the kind of shady and shadowy nature of the business. And I have my own theories, which leads me lovely into my next uh, question, which is about uh, our theories and beliefs on this site who's behind it what's the motive how long is it going to be around for when's the next drop what are your thoughts on this god no i you know what it feels like you know how justin bieber did like drew but it's a separate thing mm -hmm. like his own brand i feel like that's what they try to do with michael to have separate and John's behind it, I feel like mm. it's just let me have a different thing and call it it's it's the same but different. And it just makes no sense. Uh, but I, I I don't know how I feel about about it because I, f I still think it should be on michaeljackson.com. Normal. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's need for another website it should be on one website. How long it will be around could be this drop will kill them because mm. honestly i i can't see a single fan <laughs> ordering that merchandise you would look like a fool a bad and <laughs> i honestly wouldn't be surprised if this would be the end of them if they don't come don't come back again like with something really really good which might even convince you guys to order <laughs> Um, I'm not paying forty-five pounds in delivery. I, I don't care how good it is. I really am not sorry. It's usually it arrives, you open it, and it's like hundred percent polystyrene. So great polystyrene. <laughs> <laughs> Ilya coming out like this in a polystyrene hoodie. Do you, do you mean polyester? polyester is that it yeah that's it that's what i meant polyester. sorry i was looking for it on the on the label a minute ago but I didn't find it. that's what i meant sorry <laughs> you have to edit me in polystyrene now for the, that no thing. that's that no that's staying in sure um i don't think they know when their next drop is i don't think they know how long this is going to be around for they can put on a front as much as they like that it's limited stock and it's sold out and all that. They will see reflected in their takings and their orders and all that that this latest drop is not doing well. They will see that. Um, how long it will be around will probably be determined by whenever who's behind it gets fin gets bored and decides, yeah. oh, we'll just, we won't announce it's closing, we'll just slowly fade it out and then it will become another redundant project who do i think is behind it the only person that they're actually following that is alive <laughs> is john branca <laughs> they're, they're only they're only following they're only following michael and he's, he's not behind this i got it's rebecca vardy's account from that when, when <laughs> <you said this. laughs> 
<laughs> it was John Branca's account. Um, <laughs> 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 but yeah, he's he's the only one that's been... <laughs> Brag- <laughs> this is Bragatha Christie. <laughs> he's he's the only one behind this this is the same reason he's on talk i will spoke about all of this before in other episodes but for certain i could probably put money on it that this is this is who this is is behind all this with regards to who i think is behind it i've said this before i think same as you that branker is behind it and i think it's very interesting that we're now starting to see john and every much official and king of style and all these kind of brands pop up away from michael they're using him they're using his name they're using his image but they're pulling it away from the core base of mj Mm. himself michaeljackson.com is the michael jackson website and now it's like no we're gonna have our own so i feel like there might be another beneficiary in this that is not making themselves known um or it's an effort to pull the merch away from sony i don't know because then you would close down that store surely and it, it, I mean, I, I, I just don't get it because surely Sony are sitting there like, why are we promoting another merchandise store on the official social channels when we've got one we're trying to sell? They need to just organize themselves better. I don't think it's like rocket science to do that. I tra- anyone, anyone watching this, go through the follower account. Have a look. Have a look for yourself. You'll see they're all bots. You're buying followers. You're buying likes. You're buying views. That means it isn't working because if it was, you wouldn't need to pay for it. It's, it's it's simple. It's as simple as that. You don't need to buy your success because you have an audience of collectively across the social media platforms, something like 80, 85 million followers. If you Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the rest of it. Yeah. And you can't shift 50 t-shirts. It's embarrassing. Yeah. The only thing getting in the way of all of this is your arrogance. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be. Because no, you wouldn't right. need to buy followers. You wouldn't. I said it's at King Vention, like, it's a business. So you would assume a business wants to make money. And in this case, it's like, no, we don't want to make money. Yeah. We make a high, high postage that 90% of people decide, no, I'm not buying it because the postage is too, is too high. I'm going to bring out a shiny design. So, like, do you want to make money? Because we want to buy merchandise. Like, fans want to buy merchandise. So don't make it, like, difficult for us. But, you know, again, even with MJ Merch Fisher, it's the same old tripe of, like, thriller and bad. Mm-hmm. You know, or we might throw you a dangerous bone once in a while. But <laughs> no, not history. <laughs> and no, not invincible. And no, nothing from the Ebony shoot in 2007 where he looks amazing. Is always going to be bad and thriller, and that's kind of visible. Sorry, you mean invisible? Yes, <laughs> yes. Who could forget when they wrote invisible or something instead of invincible, <laughs> or when they did the King of Pop T-shirt, in loads of different languages, and they had to cancel it because they what the translation they'd done it didn't say King of Pop. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. Someone was sat there on Google Translate, like let's just translate <laughs> King of Pop. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, and then fans were like, that doesn't say key of pop. So they had to change that. Final thoughts. What is our, what's your kind of summary judgment? This is a courthouse. What, what is your take? As I mentioned before, I like some designs and I would have bought it. Uh, especially with the f- first drop, I would have been, I would have been, you know, wearing it in this video. But unless they change how they do Europe or UK, uh, you know, they 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 want to charge us forty five dollars or thirty dollars for shipping, then it's not happening. Yeah, I think they definitely need to start some communication with fans and check with them. Like, is this what you want? Is this not what you want? And like I always feel Michael is on like he's so high up above all the other artists. And then if other artists can have great merch, 
why not Michael? I, I always think it's really not that hard. You just need to find out what the fans want. I think that over the internet, people will be very, very honest. We see that all the time behind a, cre- behind a keyboard, behind the screen. People will be as honest, probably very brutal. I've seen better fan mock-ups on Twitter that I saw it for the I saw it for Thriller Forty. I've seen it for merch. There has be they could run polls on their story. We've said this a million times. Say they ran a competition and they were like, guys, competition. We want the three best t-shirts that you guys can make. The best three will be made into merch and we'll sell them at our next drop. Final thoughts. Would I buy from MJ Merch Official? As I said before, I'm not prideful to go back on my word. If I have, if I like the design and the shipping costs were lower, I would buy from them. I'm not writing them off. I think they're shady and I think their marketing or lack thereof is bizarre. My my final thoughts on this is uh, if they are going to continue with this, what for me would make sense, and we're seeing a lot of artists do this, and I've been to a couple, is pop-up stores. Travel around, set yeah. a pop-up store selling this higher-end MJ Merch official collection. Do pop-up stores. Three days only in one city mm. or for a week only in this city, and just do that. And mm. that way you're going to reach the public, you're going to reach the fans, there's no shipping costs, and you're going to sell your inventory. I think it would be beneficial. And it puts Michael front and center in front of people's faces. Oh, there's a Michael Jackson shop there. Let's go. Um, and I think that would actually be a smarter move than this another random website. You know? Oh, great. Another yeah. another Instagram account to follow, posting mindless crap. I would also like to say that, I mean, as we've said on here tonight, if you have bought from it and you love it, that that's that is great and i'm happy that fans who have bought stuff have have liked it we are obviously we always say we're a debate channel so if if your guys are sitting with your mj merch on in the comments let us know that you love it like don't be afraid to say no i feel i feel different we want we want to i think a lot of the time we come across like we're just criticized 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 and we want to like this stuff too <laughs> Yeah, I think you, you can't help how you feel on it. And the natural reaction is to do that. And I do think sometimes people think we give the estate a hard time or we're critical. And I don't think that's a fair assessment um, because, you know, you can see we're all sat here in official merchandise. So we've all, all bought into it at some point. We've all been to estate and Sony related events and shows and bought albums. You know, we do buy into what they put out. But as the buying public and as the the audience, the target audience, we we are still allowed to be critical of something. And it's not wrong to want better for Michael and want more. And I think my my kind of final thought is that the estate love to wheel out the line, constantly wheel out the line, that the quality goes in before the name goes on. And I think when you when you take that statement and you apply it to MJ Merch Official. None of it is true. No. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you've found some of our talking points useful. Equally, you may have listened and thought, nah, actually, I disagree with you. Either way, we would like to know. So make your voices heard in the comments below. As Shah said, we're a debate channel, so we want to hear from you. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.